All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world. Um, my name is Pastor Dow. I want to talk to you this morning because I want to I want to speak to us on a very serious note because as I was um, in prayer uh, this morning, I had the Holy Spirit really, really, truly dealing with my heart um, about this particular situation. I believe that this is something that he wants his people to hear. Um, so if you can, view this video in its entirety, uh, pass it along to somebody else, um, and let's judge the truthfulness of this, and let's really look at this thing for what it really truly is. Um, and let's see if um, we are operating in the role and the capacity um, that the Holy Spirit would have us to operate in. Um, I believe that the enemy himself has done more dividing and conquer through doctrine, theology, and philosophy uh, in the churches um, and has used religion uh, to do this um, and so-called knowledge of the word um, than any other method that he has ever come up with. Uh, he has infiltrated into the minds of the people of the Most High. Um, the church as a whole is way, 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 way off course. And I want y'all to judge this and let's get some comments going, let's get some generation going and let's just see. Um, because we have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves in order to overcome. Now, I am salt. Um, that means um, my speech can be taken as being contemptible. Um, that, that means, um, you know, the, the I haven't lost my savior. Um, and I understand that you can get more um, with honey than you can with vinegar. Um, but I want to be truthful, as always, and I want us to consider uh, what's being said or what I'm about to say. Um, the, the whole entire church as a whole um, is way off course. And let's just be truthful. Um, what are ministers of the gospel and disciples of the gospels? What, what are we supposed to be doing today what is our real true role what what is it because in this dispensation of time um what are we to be doing um and i'm not talking uh, to those people who um, have little or if any concern whatsoever at all who do not care about promoting the truth uh, i believe that we can have a lot of power and unity and strength if we are in one if we are together in one and I understand that in today's society we're not going to agree on every point I understand this um, but we we have to have a maturity beyond what we're able to produce today now I'm going to deal with us and, I'm, and we're going to look at ourselves according to um, the dispensation of time that we're in right now to see if we're doing what the scripture says now Hebrews 13 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever uh, that means whatever he was yesterday, he's the same today and forever. Now, what we have to do is look at ourselves to see if we're producing the same uh, type of attitude, the same type of spirit, or the same type of power, um, since he is the same. We have to look at that individually within ourselves. Then we look at it um, collectively as a whole in one in the churches. And we have to look to see what is this thing that is causing us to be so divided that we're not producing um, the power of the Most High like we should. Um, in Matthew 3, 1, the scripture says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that was the message of the gospel in that dispensation of time. And that message is still the same today, which is repentance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I understand that many people have different doctrines, different theologies, and different philosophies, and different ways that they go about doing this repentance. But we all have to really, truly become very legalistic and very dogmatic to stick with the scriptures and what the Bible says and not with tradition, if we're all going to be on one accord. And, it, and he goes on to say in Matthew 4, verse 17, this is what the scripture says. 
And from that time, Jesus began to preach saying, and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the message that John the Baptist preached and the message that Jesus preached is the same exact message. In Matthew 10, 5, he goes on to say, uh, these 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, and let's see what was the command. What was the command? Because remember, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is it. Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, now th this is the blueprint, these are the instructions. Preach, saying, and this is what you should be saying. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now look and, and let's see what are the characteristics, what are the characteristics and what are the traits. Um, what are the, the things that follow those who are his disciples as the words are coming from Christ himself? He says in Matthew 10 verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Now, what have we freely received? Well, if we're preaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and we're preaching the kingdom of heaven, we ourselves should be healed. We should be cleansed. Um, we should um, be casting out devils. Since we have freely received this gospel, this message, so now it's time for us to freely give back what we've received. Now, Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Now, let's evaluate this. Are we casting out devils today in his name? Um, are we healing all manner of sicknesses today in his name? Um, now let's go a step further. The assemblies or the churches that you attend, do you see this happening on a regular continual basis? Or are the assemblies full of sick people who are having their, man their diseases and their sicknesses managed by the secular world out there? You know, once the disciples received uh, this power, what did they do? I mean, what, what was happening? What, what did they do? They actually obeyed and did what the Messiah told them to do. Because they had the same spirit of Christ imparted unto them. Look at Luke 9, 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. I submit to you today, and I say this truthfully, uh, with a heavy heart that the majority of sick people that we see in our churches today are sitting within the walls of the church um, we, we've become impotent and powerless against sickness and diseases to the point now that we justify going to the medical physicians in this world and secular authorities um, to make ourselves feel better because of our lack of faith and our, and our extreme amount of doubt of unbelief that we operate in and Luke 9 2 says and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick I, I you know see this is the gospel this is what we're supposed to be preaching and teaching today and we're really truly not seeing it we're seeing doctrines we're seeing theologies and we're seeing philosophies and then we're seeing the very people who have been so called filled with the Holy Spirit who have been um transformed who have been so called born again um, we don't see this kingdom operating in us uh, we actually go to the kingdom of this world rather than to the kingdom of God which is only given to the disciples now I've been around enough churches uh, to see the differences in doctrines um, and I've yet to see the power of the Holy Spirit operating um, in the disciples of Christ like it should be um, what we read in the scriptures um, and I want to ask you a question is there a shortage of sicknesses today is there a shortage of diseases today in our in our churches is it let me submit this and this is a fact that there are more sick folk in the churches by percentages than there are in the world and I'll tell you the reason why because we are the disciples of Christ. And so therefore the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of Satan are going to fight even tougher against us. Um, do we not need healing? 
uh, in our assemblies today? Yes or no? Uh, what prevents this healing from happening today? Well, I can tell you what, after you know, traveling around, I've done a lot of traveling around with different assemblies uh, over this past, last past year, and I can tell you clearly what the problem is. The problem is doctrine. The problem is what you believe contrary to what the Bible says. The problem is philosophy. Um, the problem is theology. We have not checked our doctrine and our philosophy and our theology and our traditions according to the scriptures. And that's why the majority of the assemblies today are powerless against um, sin, against the devil. All of these things that you embrace, um, they actually prevent you uh, from doing what the gospel says. Look what Jesus said in Luke 9, 6. And they departed and went uh, through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. I'm running out of time on this particular section, but I'll continue on in part two. And please consider carefully what I say because uh, we're losing um, a lot of good disciples of Christ uh, because sin is abounding um, and iniquity and lawlessness is being promoted so much uh, we're getting to the point now that we, we have no discernment of what's good and evil. And then those that are for our good, we, we are now calling them evil. And those that are, are evil, uh, we accept them with open arms and we embrace them um, instead of doing what the Bible says. We really truly need to consider this message. Hallelujah. I'll be back uh, with segment number two in just a second.